Hello, most of my videos are about synthesizers and how to repair them, or electronics, or music in general. But every now and again, when I'm trying to repair something, especially something old, I have to make a part, or you know, make a, a spare knob that's gone missing or something. I don't quite mean something this size, you know, a little bit smaller. But uh, I use this 3D printer, and it's a great machine. And it takes the, a filament and it goes through that sort of nozzle thing and that heats it up and it splurts out like plastic and it sets and you take the piece off and there you go, you've got your bit, which is great. But the sort of detail isn't quite there for what I need. I want something a little bit finer. So I was looking at these resin type printers and fortunately Elegoo sent me this. To review. So this is a review video. And as I say, it's been sent to me, so I've just got to get that out of the way. So uh, this is a resin-based printer, and uh, I don't actually know a heck of a lot about them, to be honest with you. But uh, I just want to experiment and see if I can make something a bit finer with this. Nice little box there with, there's your printer and uh, instruction manual, not a lot of pages, but yeah, sort of just tell you not to use it in the bath and things. Uh, I've got a box of bits here, toolkit, right, toolkit for the UK. So I guess this is it's saying UK because it'll have a UK type power supply on it. Right, I'm going to put that to one side and actually just get this out and then we'll have another look at this in a moment. So, let's get this up on the desk. Oh, it's quite heavy. Apparently, I've watched a few videos and it can make very, very fine prints. Although, much smaller. It doesn't make huge prints. Now. These things have kind of been around a long time. Dentists have used them for making uh, teeth impressions and things. So they have been around a while, but they've always been very expensive. Right, so that's your build plate. That's the, uh, that's the kind of the size of the print that you can make, not counting the height. And that's actually a 2K display from like a mobile phone type of display. There you go. There's a mobile phone. So it's actually a display from a mobile phone that's actually inside that. Uh, the reason this is this colour is because the resin sets using ultraviolet light at about 405 nanometers. And of course red and orange filter a lot of that out. That's quite a nice colour. So in this little box of bits here, this is the UK version, but anywhere else around the world, I'm guessing all it's going to be that's different is just the plug because we've got this large safety plug in the UK. Uh, what else have we got here? We've got a, a kind of a hex screwdriver. I haven't got a clue what that is. Hmm. I'll figure it out. I'll go on YouTube. YouTube's a good place for getting information. That looks like it would fit on there. Oh. Anyway, I'll figure that out. So we've got some rubber gloves. Now the thing with resin, resin's actually quite toxic. Uh, it's, it's worse for some people than others. If you get it on your skin, uh, it, it's not very good and you don't really want to be breathing in the fumes of resin either. So this, I'm not going to fire this up in this little workroom because there's not actually much ventilation in this room. I'm going to take this into another room and run it in there and do a little test print or something. I'm certainly not going to do it in here. That sadly, as this is a review, I've got to be honest about everything, that is split. So that little measuring cup is actually no good. You see that split in there? Ah, oh, that's a shame. Oh well, never mind. I've got another measuring cup anyway. It's only a a cheapy plastic thing. So okay, that's the first bad piece. Not too bad. And um, we've got a power supply. 
Uh, like I say, uh, if, if you're not in the UK, you'll just have this piece that's different. The power supplies will all be the same, and it's just to do with the plug that's on the end. And we've got uh, a scraper, very nice. And what we've we got here, oh, cutters. Zup, I can't even pronounce that. X U P C N. I don't know. X U P C N. Cutters. There's a few uh, spare bits and pieces in here. There's uh, a couple of Allen keys and there's a few grub screws and things. I think all the grub screws are in this. I don't have to attach these, do I? Might be a good idea to have a look at the instruction manual. And we've got some filters, so you can filter the resin when you pour it back out of there and put it back into the bottle because you don't want any little tiny bits and pieces of resin. If you get any tiny bits stuck underneath this plate as it goes down, it's going to stop it travelling all the way and you might just damage the film that's on this piece. And there's a couple of uh, breathing masks as well. So. Yeah, it's very smelly stuff, resin is. So I'm not even, I'm not even gonna open the bottle in here. It comes with this uh, USB stick. The USB goes on the back. <laughs> That's how you take that off. That is the tank. That's actually pretty solid, that. That's a good bit of uh, aluminium, I'm guessing. There's a, there's a good bit of weight to that. And it's got... Uh... A, a film on it. Sorry, a, a musical. That sounds quite good, that. Uh, yeah, so that goes in there. Let me tighten that back up so I can... All right, lift this forward. So yeah, you've got a little uh, USB socket there and your, your power goes in there and there's your on off switch. Now, I've, like I say, I've been looking at some YouTube videos about this, obviously to try and prepare myself. Uh, and there is already a slightly updated version to this, which has the USB stick in the front. So you don't have to be messing about trying to get it in the back of the machine there. I'll get it sort of partially set up here and then I shall Put this software in my computer because this has a, a, a splicing or slicing software on it called Chitu, Chitu Box or something like that, Chitu Box, and it's kind of what you really need for this machine. So that all comes with it, and uh, I know there's a sort of a demonstration print on there as well. So I'll run that on the computer in a moment. I just want to plug this in and make sure the thing lights up. Hmm, it's got a fan in it, which uh, is a little bit loud, but uh, not too terrible. Oh, that's nice and smooth. One of the things a lot of people have said is get a bit of tape, apparently, and just put a little strip down either side of the screen. And apparently what that does is it allows a little bit of an air gap in there because every time this pulls up, it pulls on this kind of uh, membrane here and it helps it to release the print from that. So you've got a bit of an air gap underneath there. Okay, now put the piece on, tighten it up and then you've got to loosen these two. Right. There you go, that's spring loaded and it can move around. Right. So, put a piece of paper in there. Now this button here is supposed to set its level. There's a little sensor in the back there so it'll know when that's come down sort of far enough. So you don't have to stop it or anything.
There you go. Right, it's happy. There's, there's a, like I say, there's a little switch, uh, op optic switch in the back there, so it knows it's come down fine off. So what people would say is put a little bit of pressure on there, not too much, and then tighten these back up. I'm probably being a bit too gentle with this. Now there's a, another test. You've got to test the actual screen as well to make sure this screen is working. Press that little button. Aha! There you go. I don't know if you can see that in that top camera. There's your ultraviolet LED light which is in the bottom and it's got that little pattern. So yeah, that's just showing you that the display is working. Now this looks like it's got something on that you have to peel off as well. Slide that in here. It's got a nice little groove so you get it absolutely correct where it's supposed to go. Right, now I'm going to move away from that for the moment and have a look at this Cheetu box. If I plug this directly in, there should be a test print already there. Uh, I want to try and add something to it that I need to be able to make with this machine anyway. So I'm going to go over to the computer and see if I can add another file to this, which is going to be uh, a, a cap of a drawbar for an organ, organ keyboard thing. So moving on. So this is the Chi2 box version 1.5, and this comes on the USB stick. So I've kind of opened it up, it's the slicing software, but what I want to do, there are two sort of chess pieces, the castles, rooks, if you like. Uh, a lot of people have printed that out already and it looks very good. However, I want to make a drawbar. So, yes, you can just drag it into place. Brilliant. So what we have here is a drawbar for an organ, and that goes on to the slider type of thing. Uh, yeah, I want to make one of those. It looks pretty big on there, but then I kind of figured out that's only the size of a mobile phone screen anyway, so it is actually a small part. Now, should it be printed flat like that? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I can add another piece. What's these buttons on the side here? No, that's going to mirror them. Uh, no, that's going to change the scale. I'm sure there's a piece up here. Auto layout, hollow, dig hole. You see, I haven't done any homework on this at all. Maybe the easiest way to do it is to just drag another one. If I go like that. Ah, oh, there you go. That's easy enough. Right, so... I'm going to make, I'm going to make four of them. Why not? There you go. So we've got four drawbar organs, uh, organ pieces rather. Now the thing with one of these resin printers is it won't take any longer to make four of them as it will to make just one of them. Now with the filament printer it has to move from one place to another and do that bit, that bit, that bit, that bit, and keep on going backwards and forwards until all four of them have been built up. But uh, with this type of printer, from what I know, it's doing the whole thing in slices. So if you've got four of those or just one of those, it doesn't matter. The only thing you're going to use up is a bit more resin. But actually making four of those or one of those should take the same time, unless they're tilted and they're a little bit higher so the bed has to do a little bit more work that way. But it will slice all four of them as it's working its way up. So press slice and see what happens. That was pretty quick actually. And I'm guessing this, there you go, you can see it slice by slice. It's almost like an MRI scanner. Looking through all the different bits and pieces, that looks good to me. So the total weight is 4.7 grams. It's going to cost 13 cents. I don't know what that is in English money. And it should take one hour and 14 seconds. So I'm going to save that. Drawbars, there we go. Right, 
I'm going to eject this then and uh, put it on the machine. But I'm going to move the machine to a room that's actually got a bit more of an airflow. I don't want to do it in here. Right, I've moved this into another room, so I apologise for the echoey sounds in here. Uh, that's why I never record in here. Okay. Because I've switched this off and moved it from one room to another, I've got to reset its height again. Now, every time you go touching resin, it's always a good idea to put these rubber gloves on. Now, these are pretty cheap, so what I did in advance, I bought another box, just in case. Because you only get about uh, two or three pairs actually in this lot. So, uh, what do I do now? Okay, I have to give this a little bit of shape. Not too much, because you don't want loads and loads of bubbles in there. Just in case I splash. Put them on. So, I'm going to pour some of this in. I think that's more than enough. Wipe that off there. And then, put that back in there for now. And hopefully, in the print menu, there we go. There's your four draw bars. Yeah, that looks okay to me. Now, where did I put the lid? Ah! I'll put the camera in a bit closer and I'm going to leave the room because I can smell this is already getting to me a little bit. bit smelly but I figured out what this piece is for now I'm going to take that off and then slide that on there and that on there that helps the resin drip back off into the actual tub here it is a bit smelly but it's it's not it's not too terrible I need something that I can put some isopropyl alcohol in And now, filter back what's left of this into there. Ah. Make sure it's nice and clean before we put it back. Now the part is not over quite yet because those parts are still a little bit soft and still need a bit more curing. The problem is, in England right now, it's kind of winter time, so we get about four minutes of sunshine a day. So this has got to go under some UV light now because these parts are actually a little bit soft, but the detail looks great. So, curing. So the parts look pretty good, but they're still a little bit soft. You, if you stuck your nail in it, you would uh, damage it. So. They need a bit more ultraviolet. Now this little thing, I bought this off uh, Amazon again. It's about £15 and it's one of those UV nail things for, for ladies' nails or whatever. 
uh, but it's UV light. So again, just by watching what other people are doing, they're just buying machines like this and bombarding this with UV light. So I'll sort of place those on there like so, slide them in. And I don't know how long for, but I'm just going to give them a bit of UV to cure it. Uh, this particular one, this has got a timer on it, but you can override the timer and just ignore it and just leave it on the UV. So I'm just going to leave it like that for a bit and see if that cures it a little bit further. Hopefully, should do. So my absolutely unbiased opinion, and I, I, it is unbiased. I know I got this sent to me for free, but that does not oblige me to sing absolute praises about it. Now, uh, the filament printer that I've got is, is great. It's brilliant. I can sit it on this desk in this tiny little room and it does its business. You scrape off the item and put, the, put it away and it's done. There's not any sort of cleaning up to do. Yeah, you might spend a bit of time levelling the bed and things every now and again, but other than that, it just, it just works. It just does what it does. However, the detail, that's what's important. The detail is from the filament printer to this resin printer, it's, it's completely chalk and cheese. The detail on this machine is incredible. Uh, this tiny little fader cap, which I knocked up in Fusion 360, uh, and then Chi2Box Chi is the software that comes with this for the slicing. It, it was very easy, just drag your design into the Chi2 box and stick it in the back of that, press the button and let it do its business. But this uh, fader cap has very, very tiny little grooves on the inside. It's, it's got words on the back as well. I thought I'll add a few words and see how they come out. But uh, the, the, the detail in that, the size is absolutely perfect for what I wanted. There's no way I could have made that on a filament printer. So yes, singing all praises about this for its uh, detail. It's all nice metal construction and everything seems solid and it looks like it's going to last a long time, hopefully. Now then, the downside. Okay, uh, you're going to have to uh, buy a little curing station. This was £15. It's one of those things for ladies' nails or something. Or uh, you could put it out in the sunshine, but in England at the moment we, we've not got much sun at all. So yeah, you need a little curing station. Uh, you need to buy gloves, you need to buy paper towels, you need uh, isopropyl alcohol, you need filters. Uh, these filters actually come with the machine though, but there's about 10 there I think. Uh, so yeah, you're going to always be needing to use this stuff that you clean up and throw it away. And sadly, just making these four little bits produced this much waste, stinky waste. That's another thing. The smell of this resin isn't isn't very nice, so you've got to uh, put it in a well ventilated area. I could not use this machine in this little room; it would just uh, be too toxic. But uh, other than that, it's yeah, it's brilliant. There's no way I could make these any other way, and. Uh, as I repair synthesizers and old synthesizers and things, sometimes you get these little knob caps and they're, they're, they're missing. You, you can't just go online and buy them, but as long as you've got one of them to measure it up, you can just knock out as many as you like or just redesign them yourself. And these fit perfectly onto the device that I'm working on at the moment. So yeah, that is a big plus for this. And like I say, it's £229 at the moment of making this video. By the way, I'll put some links and things underneath the uh, video in the description box where you can actually get these. The resins are, I think they're about £25-ish, and uh, that's for the 500 grams. And they come in several colours. But uh, yeah, other than that, I think it's a brilliant machine. I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of this. I think it's going to be very handy. I just don't like all the cleaning up afterwards. Even though you can leave the resin in there for a couple of days if you wish, 
uh, before it starts going tacky. So you don't have to clean it up every single time you use it, as long as you're going to use it the next day or something and top it up with a bit of resin or whatever. But other than that, yeah, brilliant machine. Highly recommend one if you need small, very finely detailed things. So there you go. I hope this video was useful to you uh, or interesting. If it was, please give us a thumbs up and click that little bell for uh, future videos. Like I say, I've got a couple of ideas to do with this, so there'll be a, uh, I'm sure there'll be a couple of more videos coming along about uh, little ideas that I've got to do with this. Anyway, uh, babbling on now. Thanks very much for watching. All the best. Bye-bye. Uh, Thank you.